This is section 2.1, part two. All right, so um, there is an alternative form for the definition of the derivative evaluated at a particular value of x called c. So I want to tell you about what to tell you about that one, just so that you're aware that it exists. Oh, wow. Let's try that again. My smooth curve. There we go. Um, we could call uh, the original point on this, let's say point P is right here, where P has coordinates uh, C, F of C still. That's going to be the same. And we'll make uh, another point Q, let's say right here, be a movable point. C, C will be a constant. And so that's going to stay C, whatever it is. Like if it's 2, it'll be C equals 2. But Q, we're going to call a movable point, And its coordinates will be X because X can change to be anything we want it to be, comma F of X. So this is... Uh, instead of c plus delta x, we're just calling that movable point over there um, x comma f of x. And so the slope of the secant between those two would be y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And uh, the slope of the tangent line at C will be, as we did before, the limit as these two points come together of this formula. So this is the slope of the secant formula, and we're taking its limit as the two points get closer and closer to each other. Now, P can't move, so it's Q that's moving. So in order for Q to get closer and closer to P, um, X is going to have to get closer and closer. The X coordinate of Q has to get closer and closer to C. Okay, so that's just another definition of the derivative at C, an alternative de definition. Um, one thing that has to be true uh, for the limit as X approaches C to to actually exist, there are two requirements that have to both be met. Um, the limit as x approaches c from the left of that expression and the limit as x approaches c from the right of that expression. For the limit to exist, those two one-sided limits have to be what? Right, they have to be the same thing. You have to be going toward the same value uh, from the left side as from the right side. So uh, these are called the derivatives from the left here. The derivative from the left is this one. And the other one's called the derivative from the right. And the der derivatives from the left and right have to be equal for the derivative to exist. Um, and from that, it, it follows that f is differentiable on a closed interval from a to b. When it is differentiable on a to b, the open interval a to b, and when the derivative from the right at A and the derivative from the left at B both exist. So in other words, um, if we have a function that goes from A to B as like this, and we want to be able to say it's differentiable that whole time, we can uh, use the original definition for differentiability on the open interval A to B 
that means the derivative has to exist at every number in between a and b. Then we check for differentiability at a. from the right of a. So that would be one of those um, one-sided limits, the one that's from the right. And it would have to be differentiable at x equals b from the left. And let's say all three of those things are true. It's differentiable on the open interval. It's differentiable uh, at a from the right and differentiable at a from the left and that would say that this function therefore is differentiable on the closed interval a to b. So we've added the endpoints by having the one-sided derivative, derivative from the left and derivative from the right. Now, um, if a function is not continuous, so f not continuous at a number at x equals c. Oops, forgot to write the x equals, sorry, at x equals c. Uh, if it's not continuous at x equals c, it is not differentiable. At x equals c. So you must have continuity as a precondition for differentiability. Remember, I said we were talking about continuity, how important that concept is. If you don't have continuity, a lot of things fall apart. So if you have a discontinuity, it's definitely not differentiable at that discontinuity, x equals c. So, for example, if we looked at the um, greatest integer function, um, which if, if you'll recall, let me do this really fast, set this up, is that step function looks like this. And of course it goes on forever in stepwise fashion. Um, those are all discontinuous. Uh, that function is discontinuous at each and every integer. Uh, so it's, we're going to show that it's not differentiable at the integer values is what I want to show you. Um, so if I took um, the limit as x approaches, say, 0 from the left of f of x minus f of c, which is 0, all over x minus 0, um, we would substitute x in to the function, and that would be greatest integer of x, and then substitute 0 into that, the greatest integer of 0 is 0 over x, and as x goes to infinity, I'm sorry, as x goes toward 0, um, this value will go toward infinity, because the denominator is going to increase, uh, decrease decrease and you'll be dividing by smaller and smaller numbers. So um, that means it's going to be infinitely large. And if you take the limit of the same expression from the right side, f of x minus f of c all, all over x minus c again, that'll be the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of greatest integer of x minus 0 over x. And that will go towards 0. And of course, those two things are not the same. Um, 
And so therefore we can say for sure that the limit as x approaches just plane zero of f of x whoops, minus f of zero over x minus zero does not exist. And therefore we can say that the function f is not differentiable at x equals 0. And you could do this for any integer and the same thing would happen. Okay, so um, now I've said that uh, if a function um, is not continuous at x equals c, then it's definitely not going to be differentiable at x equals c. So, uh, however, um, and, and what that means is the implication is that if you have a derivative, whoops, kind of freaked out on me there for a second. Try that again. Uh, if you have a derivative, that means it's a differentiable function. And the ability to find the derivative is called differentiability. So uh, the differentiability of a function um, implies that you have to have continuity. Because if you don't have continuity, it's definitely not differentiable. Okay. Differentiability implies continuity. It was one of the last things I was talking about. The ability to find the derivative is called differentiability. And if a function is differentiable at a point, then the implication is that it must be continuous at that point. The converse of this statement, however, is not necessarily true. Uh, the converse is where you um, switch the order um, of your statement. So, what, let me say first, if you have a statement that's in an if-then kind of formulation, if the function is differentiable at C, then F is continuous at C, is a statement. The converse of a statement switches the hypothesis and conclusion, and the converse is if B, then A. So let me give you a, a kind of silly example to have you understand this well. Uh, let's say that our A statement is um, plays for the Dallas Cowboys, is a Cowboys team member, which I guess right now we don't have a whole lot of that looking forward uh, unless they lift all of the uh, restrictions. But this example, I guess you'll understand it, even if it doesn't happen this fall. Um, so A is plays for the Dallas Cowboys and B is male. So I think you clearly would agree with the statement if you play for the Dallas Cowboys, at least for right now, um, until this changes, of course it's always up to change, but for right now if you play for the Dallas Cowboys then you are male. However, is the converse of that statement true? If you're a male, you are a Dallas Cowboys player. I don't think so. I don't play for the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm male. And I bet you, you know, like your dad and your brother and your nephew and the little baby boy down the street, those aren't Dallas Cowboy players. So the converse is not necessarily true. Over here, the converse of that statement would be that continuity implies differentiability. 
Ah, I can say that word better. Differentiability. And that is not necessarily true. Okay. All right, so to establish the truth of what I just said, that just because you have a continuous function, it's not necessarily differentiable everywhere, I'd like for us to consider the function um, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. Um, and I'd like to state that the graph of this is a v-shape, which is something I'm sure you learned in college algebra. And let me plot a few grid marks here so that we can get a sense of what's going on. Um, and the graph of this looks like this. There's a ray slope 1 that goes this way, an array with slope 2 that goes this way, and that's the function f of x equals absolute value of x minus 2. So while that function is linear on the left side of 2 and on the right side of 2, it's definitely differentiable because the derivative of a line is just its slope. So it's differentiable before 2 and after 2. So for x is less than 2 and x is greater than 2. Again, because it's a polynomial function, we know that's true. But in reality, this is a piecewise defined function. Um, what I'd like to do next is uh, use the definition of absolute value and say that this will give me back whatever I'm putting in as long as what I'm putting in is greater than or equal to zero. But when um, what I'm putting in is less than zero, when the input is less than zero, I'll get back the opposite of that negative thing. Okay, so, um, so we'll have x minus 2 and solving for x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So y equals x minus 2, of course, is a line, slope 1, right? And we'll get negative x plus 2 when x is solving for x less than 2 which of course is a line with slope negative 1 and happens to have a y-intercept of positive 2 by the way which I tried to draw correctly. So this is a piecewise defined function and it's continuous for x less than 2 and x greater than 2. The big question is how about when it is 2? I mean is it differentiable? I didn't mean to say continuous. It is continuous at 2, correct? Yeah, it is because uh, from the left you're approaching 0, from the right you're approaching 0 and f of 2 2 is 0, so it's, it's uh, definitely continuous at x equals 2. So we'll just write that as a statement. We know it's continuous at x equals 2. And the question is, does that imply that it has to be differentiable? So to address that, what we're going to do is the two-sided limits so we'll take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left and using that alternate form of the definition of the derivative at a point um, that'll be f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2 and as long as we're on the left side of 2 look over to the right where I wrote the piecewise defined function, 
which one of those is the appropriate expression of f of x when x is to the left of 2, when x is smaller than 2? Yes, f of x in that case is negative x plus 2 minus f of 2, well, f of 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, absolute value is 0, 0, right? All over um, x minus 2. And if I were to, in the numerator, factor out that negative 1, which would leave x minus 2, that x minus 2, which is troublesome to me because I can't divide by 0. I can't substitute 2 in for x. But because I can factor, I can cancel that common factor. It's that factor and cancel technique I talked about before, which leaves negative 1, and the limit of the constant is that constant. Okay, now let's invest investigate the limit coming from the right because this would be the derivative from the left that we just found is negative 1. The derivative from the left is negative 1. So we have found the limit um, from the left side. Now we need to find the limit from the right side of 2. So we'll have this difference quotient, which is what this thing is called, by the way. Both forms that we've seen is a difference over a difference, basically a slope calculation. It's called a difference quotient. Um, now, from the right side of 2, um, oh, I see a mistake I made. Let me fix that. Um, sometimes I don't see things until like a minute later, and it's like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. Okay, see the, it's x minus 2. I'd written x is greater than or equal to 0. I was supposed to solve for x and get 2 on the right side, and I wrote that incorrectly. So now it's correct. So go back and fix that if you don't have it. So from the right side of 2, well, I shouldn't have changed colors on you. Let me go back here. Um, since we're approaching 2 from the right, that means the numbers are bigger than 2. The correct expression for f of x in that case is x minus 2. And then f of 2 is still 0 over x minus 2. And that's going to simplify to be 1 because the numerator and denominator are the same thing. And the limit of a constant is that constant. And so since the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of our difference quotient is not equal to the limit from the left, because obviously one's positive one, the other one's negative one. Uh, they're not the same number then since the limit from the left and the right are not the same oh my gosh I see I made another mistake I don't think I can talk and write at the same time tonight I'm totally goofing up some things here at least for the most part I'm finding my mistakes it could be a little bit more tragic if I left something wrong and didn't fix it uh, maybe you'd understand but Anyway, since uh, two um, one-sided limits are not the same, uh, we can conclude that the limit as x approaches 2 of this difference quotient does not exist. And that means that the derivative at 2, thus f prime of 2, does not exist and therefore f is not differentiable
at x equals 2 despite the fact that it's continuous there. So the whole point of this argument was to say just because something's continuous does not mean it has to be differentiable. So we've just shown that this statement, if it's continuous, it means it has to be differentiable. No, that's false. This is not necessarily true. Um, now, a lot of times it's, it could be true that when you have a continuous function, it will be differentiable there. But it doesn't mean that it has to be differentiable when it's continuous. And so uh, that converse statement, this one right here, is not necessarily true. And we, we can't assume that it will be. So just because I say something's continuous, you can't jump onto that and say, oh, therefore it must be differentiable. Nope, can't do that. Now, if I tell you that a function is differentiable, then that means you can say for sure that you have continuity. And that's the statement up here from earlier. All right. So, ah, boy, it took a little while to explain, but I think it was worth it. Uh, it's good for you to know this kind of stuff. Um, now, there is a... Um, Uh, a theorem that encapsulates this theorem 2.1 that if f is differentiable at x equals c then f will be continuous at x equals c for sure and by the way just as a, a summary of something that we just noticed anytime the graph of a function comes to a sharp point or a corner like that or uh, some kind of sharp turn like if it's a kind of a nice smooth curve and then all of a sudden it just does something radically different um, and you have that corner again or it comes like that these places the function will not be differentiable at those places and you can prove those uh, using this argument that we just did the limit of the um, difference quotient from one side and the other side are not the same which implies that the limit as x approaches that value of c doesn't exist which means that it's not differentiable at that c value and that's how you would go about proving those so uh, kind of a summary if a function is differentiable at x equals c then it is definitely continuous at x equals c so differentiability implies continuity but it is possible for a function to be continuous at x equals c and not be differentiable at x equals c. So continuity does not imply differentiability. Okay, and there's one other type I forgot to mention, those corner things that I mentioned. And if there's a vertical tangent line to a curve, like right here you'd have a vertical tangent line, um, that point is it's not going to be differentiable there because we won't be able to find a value a numerical value for the slope because it's not a number it's infinitely large so um, for that reason uh, vertical tangent lines are not differentiable uh, I'm sorry when there's a vertical tangent line the function is not differentiable at that point of tangency so uh, those are things that you can visually know that you won't have differentiability at those sharp turns nor when there's a vertical tangent line okay that finishes this section i will see you in class